Hey there, Segudo Golfers. Tom Segudo here, PGA member and founder of Segudo Golf. And today, we're gonna be practicing on the range and I'm gonna walk you through my entire practice routine and what I'm working on and how I go about making swing changes. Yes, I am working on something. So today, you will get to see an insight on how I work on things and how you can better implement swing changes in your game to have the most fast swing change possible and have more effective practice so that you can translate it from the range to the course. So let's get started. Shout out to everybody who attended the webinar and signed up for the webinar. We had over 500 people sign up, so I apologize. We had some people unable to make it into the room. There was only 150 spots available in our room. We thought 150 spots would be enough. Turns out it was nowhere near enough, so there will be a sequel and we'll have many more spots available in the room for the next time. But thanks again, and please know, we were trying to accommodate as many people as possible. It just turned out that everybody wanted to get on the Simplified Golf Swing, which is a great thing. So we'll be doing a bigger webinar in the future. Subscribe to this channel if you want to have the best ball striking of your life, because I'm gonna help you get there in the most simple and body-friendly way possible. Here we go, let's kick it off my practice session. All right, first thing I like to do is stretch because no matter what your age is yeah when you're young you can get away with it when you get older and even into like the mid and late 20s you start to feel some tension in your muscles so it helps to stretch and warm up properly I always start with a nice little stretch what I'm starting out with here is a hamstring stretch you use the legs a lot in the golf swing if they're stiff or they're not willing to move it's gonna be difficult for you to get those hips turning also you're gonna you're not gonna really feel your lower body doing any work in the swing so I like to warm them up first and then next you're seeing me do a calf stretch here, which is also once again the legs, very important to get the legs warmed up and ready to go. Then after that, keeping it simple still, I'd like to do a nice lower back stretch, feeling this part, feeling those parts of my lower back. And the reason for that is if you just go out cold and don't stretch, this is something I've found, because you're engaging the muscles in the back in your swing, what I've found is that if you don't stretch at all on that back, you'll have some muscle soreness the next day. But when you do stretch, or when I've stretched, I feel like there's no soreness at all. So it really plays a big role in how you feel after a round, and also how you play during the round. Because if you have tight muscles, your swing's gonna feel different than if you were warmed up. It's like waking up on two sides of the bed in the morning. If you fall off the bed with tight muscles, your swing could. But if you keep your muscles nice and light through stretching, your swing will perform a lot better. That's what I've found in my experience. Okay, step one of pra good practice, set up a practice station. It's very important that we practice consistently because our practice environment, it's not the golf course. In fact, golf is the only sport where we practice on a range. Think about how you practice other sports like basketball, baseball, basketball. You practice basketball on a basketball court where you play. Baseball, you're, you're doing uh, batting practice. You're hitting baseballs in the batter's box onto a baseball field with a pitcher on the pitcher's mound. You're practicing like you play. In golf, it's completely opposite. We go out here to an empty range, this wide abyss in front of us with tons of targets. And we just hit a ball out there and say, oh, it hit the red flag, I hit the flag. And you're aimed at the blue flag on the right, but you hit the red flag on the left. You say, well, it hit a flag, didn't I? No, it's not like, when you go out on the course, you don't say that. Oh, I aimed at the right bunker and it went the left bunker. That's okay. No, it's not okay. It means you yanked it 50 yards left. So when we go out here and practice, there's a lot of targets. You need to pick one target and set up a practice station just like this. So what we're looking at here is the target line. This is a line that extends through the target at the distance. It's an orange flag out there. And then here we've got the foot line. That's for my feet. Your feet are always parallel to the target line. And lastly, this is optional. This is your ball position. It's gonna help you have a consistent ball position throughout the entire practice session. One of the most important keys to effective practice is being able to control your environment. You see, if we introduce a lot of variables, we end up having variable practice. And what I want to do through having a drill or setup station like this is my alignment's already preset, my ball position's preset, so now I've eliminated the variable's alignment because your swing, it will make compensations if your alignment is off. So somebody, for example, if it's aimed right, they swing over the top to hit it left. Something like that can happen in your swing. 
I'm eliminating that variable because I don't want the, that to creep into my swing when I'm working on something new. So Segudo Golfers, what am I working on out here? Well, today I'm working on my swing and I want more particularly working on the back swing. And I got a couple things I want to do. One, my grip is too strong. It's causing me to hook the ball. Why is it causing me to hook the ball? Well, having my left hand so far over, my right hand so far under naturally lends itself to having the club go low in the takeaway. On the way down, it, has, it lends itself to staying too low, sending my path out to the right, and I hit these big, big post pattern hooks. Kind of like you saw in the driver episode, I hit that 30 yard hook that hit the building. Yeah, so I need to weaken the grip to prevent that club face, or pre to prevent that club from getting so low in the golf swing. That right hand will be a little bit more on top. Second thing I want to talk about and work on is I'm losing my connection in the takeaway here by doing a little bit of this. And that's causing me to lift the club to the top and lose my beautiful relationship with the ball. No good. So then I start hitting hooks again because when I level out, it directs my path way out to right field. And then I finish high and I hit these massive hooks. So really today is focusing on not doing any of that. <laughs> we got the grip. In the backswing, I'm gonna focus on keeping this connection between my left arm and my chest. And I want my shoulder to continue going down to the top. And this is where I want it. Now, if I go any further back than this, I'm gonna make adjustments. I have a tendency to overswing, and when I do, my shoulder levels out. So I'm going to make sure I've got this connection and that connection is staying there throughout the entire swing and my shoulder is staying down. And you're gonna be there to make sure I'm doing this right. So if I don't do it right, feel free to come out here and hit me with a stick until I do get it right. When you practice, don't be too concerned about ball flight just set. The feelings that I'm going through are different than what my swing is like. So feel versus real. This feels very odd to me right now. So I'm not gonna expect to hit it really well. I just wanna build the motion. And a lot of you are working on building these new motions. You've got to expect really good shots, really bad shots, WTF shots, just from the beginning. You're building a motion, you're, un you're in uncharted territory. It's like learning a new language and then going right into the country without even ever been there or speaking that language before. It's a whole new language, it's a whole new body pattern. You've got to trust it and make sure you're working on the right things and that's what I'm doing here. So if I overswing and lose that relationship with the ground, I really want you to come out here and beat me with a stick. Something else that's really cool, I've got this Shot Tracer app and I'll be introducing it midway through the episode. We'll see how it works, I just got it, we'll try it out. It's like 549 on Google. Yeah, Google Play. Another thing when practicing, use a club you like. I got an eight iron, nobody loves the eight iron. I love the eight iron. It's just so underrated, I don't know why. It's infinity, it's the infinity club. When you practice, take it easy on yourself for one. Don't expect perfection and just make sure you're getting the right motion down. You want the right motion because that's the motion you wanna build into your swing. It doesn't matter how you hit it out here. All it matters is getting the right motion when making a swing change. Cause you can hit it great with your old swing like every once in a million shots, but you know that what you're working on here is gonna help you hit it great 999,999 out of a million shot. So let's get started with the practice session. I'm gonna warm up, and like I said, it's an eight iron, so I'm just gonna warm up, hit some shots, then I'm gonna go right into practicing it and working on it. So as I'm warming up here, I've got the weaker grip already. You might notice this. Which is probably standard, so it feels weird to me. It's keeping the club face open longer. I'm hitting some shots to the right, and also it's affecting my point of contact. I'm not quite used to that feeling at impact, so I'm not taking as many divots just yet. So my confidence level is not there, but I'm okay with it because I'm warming up and I know I'm, I'm expecting this because I'm making a change. I'm expecting not to hit it perfect every time. 
my grip was, as you see in old episodes, this big angle between my left hand and my right arm, that big cupping, and naturally lends me to hitting those hooks. So this is going to be a change that's going to help me hit a lot of a much tighter ball flight. Alright, so that's about 10 balls or so, and most of them pretty good considering the grip felt feels really weird right now. I always feel like, seriously, it feels like a foreign language that I've never spoken before. I'm just dropped right in, like I'm going to Italy. My last name's Segudo, but I don't speak a lick of Italian, except the stuff I learned in The Godfather. Strikes, pretty good right on the middle of the face. I wouldn't have it any other way. So I know that even though what I'm working on isn't perfect, I'm getting some feedback right here. And that's the feedback I want to see. That's the feedback you want to see too. Now I'm going to start working on the move, getting my swing shortened up. I'm also going to get some video of my swing using my cell phone, review that, go over it with you. You'll be able to see everything right there. I use the V1 Golf app. It's the same app I use to teach you online lessons. It's a really great system. All you do is send me in lessons through the V1 app and you can actually send the video to me directly and then I can send the analysis and the whole lesson back to you through here. It's really cool. But I'm going to be use, analyzing my swing using V1. When filming, make sure that your camera is set up so that it's right down your foot line. You're getting a view like this. You want to be able to see right down the middle of the foot line, target line's here, and it's about hip high. Your camera's about hip high. For both views, face on and down the line hip high camera height. Okay, swing one, and now I'm gonna pause the camera and we're gonna take a look at it. Hey, Segudo Golfers, here we are in the V1 mobile app. It's a free app for your phone. Really love using it. And here's the first swing we're gonna take a look at right here. After a nice little warm up, we'll see what needs to be done. Okay. A little bit of a pull there. Now I've started working on getting the left arm more across the chest, but I'm looking to improve that more. And you can see swing overall, back swing's looking a lot better than it used to. We've got the shaft plane here. And I'm also looking at the shoulder line, making sure I can turn my shoulders 90 degrees to my spine. Biggest key for consistent contact. Here we go. As we take the club back, yeah, left arm across the chest is helping me do that as well as the shoulder turning down. Now, if I don't turn that shoulder down, I get in trouble with a steeper downswing. And as we can see, my shoulder is not quite turning down enough. And this is the beginning of the lesson. So, the grip change has me feeling a little bit more like I've got a bowed wrist. That's something different. I'm used to having more of a cup wrist because I've got that strong, strong left hand position. I'm not too disappointed in this backswing position. Really want to get the left arm across the chest, but the shoulder needs to be down more. It's leveled out. So my contact will be inconsistent. And the first move that happens when you level out is either a steepening of the club, like this. And what does steep mean? Well, just means the club shaft is angled steeper to the ground than when I started. As you see, it intersects the red line. I'm in trouble there because then I've got to use my hands through the shot. Don't want to have to use your hands. You'd rather use your body to square the face. It's a lot more consistent. Now I shallow it out late, so I get it close to that red line, but it's still a little steep. At impact, I got a nice square club face. My foot's not, my right foot's not coming off the ground or, over, or rotating too much, so I'm happy about that. And you can see the rotation of the club face right here, from squared impact to 90 degrees. If I want to draw the, I'm going to draw the club face after impact and before. So after is there. 
before is there. So, so we go from square to closed in a really short period of time. That tells me that I'm using my hands a lot through the hit. I'll probably finish my arms above my shoulder line. There it is. The arms finish above the shoulder line. That's the, that's the sign of somebody who hits too much of a draw, hits a pull. You're just swinging um, usually into out a lot or using your hands a lot. A lot of steep players and a lot of people that hook the ball finish like this. All right, based on that brief analysis, I can tell that my backswing has changed tremendously based on the grip change itself because it feels really different to me. Remember, feels not real. Feels weird? Well, it means I'm making a change. So my backswing is different than where it was when I started, you know, maybe a week or two ago. And I'm showing you the footage from the old lessons. I mean, I mean, my, my, my swing last week, so you can see the change. But my shoulder is not turning down enough, and I'm not getting my hands in enough. There's a little bit of lift in my swing, and it's causing me to be slightly steep on the downswing. So what I'm gonna do is make sure my left arm goes across my chest, and it's keeping this connection and the shoulder's staying down to here. My swing's gonna feel probably really low and short compared to what I'm used to because I know that my swing tends to go long and up so I have to expect the opposite low and short or short and low okay long and up short and low feelings Felt pretty good. So that last shot went high and right. Once again, not worried about that because I know with the weakening of the grip, my face is gonna stay open longer. So it was pushed, started right, and then it went more right. So it's probably a little steep because it curved right. The curve is the path. So if I come down steep, the path's going, gonna cause the ball to cut. That was better. Feel-wise, it feels like this. But I know that it's probably not looking like that in the swing. So I chunked the one before that, but it, it's, I'm starting to feel the lead shoulder come down a little bit more. And um, it feels like I'm tilting more toward the target, but I'm taking the hands in. It's all due to that club coming across the chest, which is pulling everything around. I think I'll make a future episode out of this because this feeling is putting the whole backswing together without me thinking about it. This, this this is so cool because the more in you go, the higher the ball flies. It used to it used to think like the higher you take the arms, and you know the more you drop it, the more you do all that, you'd hit it higher. But this is just making it so much simpler. That was a beautiful divot. I'm taking it here. Oh, it feels so good. Now I'm not probably taking it there in real life, in like reality, but feel-wise, it feels like that.
once again the strikes are right on the center of the face so I'm still happy with that. Feeling pretty good. We're actually feeling really good. I know this sounds crazy, but even though I hit the ball well in a lot of the episodes and it feels great, the compression feels even better now. Really, it gets better. With that shoulder going deeper, down. Hands going deeper. Oh man. I can't hold back any emotions. It's it's the same feeling for you when you hit it well as it is for me. And we're all after the same feeling. Woo! It is crispy. Proof is in the pudding right here. I mean, those balls are nice and high. Just moon shots falling on the green, really soft. I don't feel like I'm working hard right in the middle. <laughs> Complete fart right there. Woo. Sometimes that's going to happen. Life happens. You're making a change. But I can tell you that what I'm doing feel-wise is very different than what I bet's happening in the swing. I think the swing might be right where it needs to be. I can always confirm with more video. I've got my shot tracker running right now though, so um, I'll confirm later. What's really important, this is, if you got long arms like me, like look at what my arms go down to my kneecaps almost. Something you gotta be aware of is the hands being under the chin. If they get too close and you try and take it in, your arm is already too low and that's probably what could cause a chunk. Um, gets too low on the shoulder line. See my shoulder's here, arm is here. Whereas if I put it out here more and I do the same thing, it's right where it needs to be. So you might need a little bit more forward bend. You've gotta have the hands under the chin. I can feel like I'm finishing lower as well, which is telling me that I'm not sending the path way out to right field. Now I might be a little steep still, but I'm not concerned about that because I want to get rid of the hook. So this is going to get rid of that. I can figure out the finer details later in another practice session. I want to get this right now. All right, now I want to double check because I feel like I'm going low enough. Uh, Feel-wise, it's it's definitely a lot lower than where I was. I don't feel any lift. That's what you want. I need to make sure the shoulder's going down enough. That feels down. That's what I want. I'm really centered over the ball. Clean contact all day long. I'm gonna move us over the face on.
clean strikes, middle of face. Oh, that felt good. That felt really good. Weak grip, still is getting the ball to start to the right, which is what I want. I don't want it diving left, so I'm feeling a little different impact. It feels like the hands are quieter. That's because the hands are lower. It's more body going through instead of the hands rolling, okay? That's what's keeping the start direction of my shots pretty much the same spot. I love that. That's consistency. I've got a bit of a fade wind left to right, so my straight shots look like fades. That's it, nice connection across the chest. Thin the wind, right? Notice how every swing, I'm being really deliberate about what I'm trying to do. So, Every swing, I'm not just beating balls rapidly. Oh, shoulder down. Then go pull that one, shoulder down. No, no. Every swing has to be meticulously rehearsed because we're training quality shots. Quality repetitions equals quality improvement. Randomly just hitting balls for the sake of hitting balls equals randomly just hit missing it everywhere on the golf course. Every move I'm making has an intention. So I'm hitting a couple thin shots. I might be taking a little too low, but I also might be on the right path because if I'm steep, I might take a deeper divot. Though if you take it lower and your shoulder's not down, you'll thin it all day. Because I need that relationship to the ball. Oh, oh, that felt good. A little bit pulled left, but that felt so good. I'm loving this new grip. I haven't seen the ball over curve yet. It's just stayed right on line. What they say about grip changes, and a lot of pros have said this, at first they start hitting, if they weaken their grip, they start hitting it way to the right, away, away from their body, way off to the, way, you know, away from them. If you're right-handed, it's going right. Well, and then you adjust, you make adjustments over time. Eventually you start scoring it up once you get more comfortable. But it takes some time, it takes a lot of repetition. There's another push, so straight push. That's okay, I'm compressing it a lot better than I ever have. I rushed that one, I got ahead of myself. You're gonna be tempted to do that sometimes you get on a roll, you're like, okay, now I've got this. Always remember to settle back in. Settle back into your routine. I promise you, if you practice like this, you'll see instant results. I mean, you'll see the swing improves much more quickly than if you just went to the range and beat a bucket. I don't want you I don't want you um, going out trying these things and not giving it a real shot. I mean, you got to go out, you've got to actually do it. You got to rehearse it. You don't rush through this. This is a, it's a new motion. I, I've never, I used to be one of those people who rushed through everything, try to get results at 10,000 balls and as quickly as I can. Golf doesn't work like that, quality repetition. rush that swing and I paid the price in the form of a thin shot and you might rush a couple because you're in uncharted territory it's uncomfortable and when we get uncomfortable we get tense and then we get uncomfortable we're not used to giving up that control we're used to the old motion the old motions where we want to go your brain your body is fighting you 
It's a war right now. It's a war. Your golf swing is a war zone when you're making changes. So always be deliberate. I'm always checking, is my grip getting stronger by accident? Is it going back to the old habit or is it staying weak? Weaker, neutral. I also like that my finish isn't over rotating the right foot. So that's telling me I'm not coming too into out, which is the big cause of my hooks. You'll start finishing with that right foot more inward, right about there. Tells you you're on the right path. Oh yeah. I just gave up control on that one for some reason and it worked out. So we're gonna hit a few more. I don't want this to be like an hour long practice session. Um, I'm really looking at a good, nice little half hour of quality repetitions. You don't have to beat yourself to death when you practice. You don't have to hit a million balls. All you gotta do is make sure you do quality repetitions. When I first started learning this swing, I maybe took 10, 15 swings on the range, quality on my lunch break at work. That quality showed itself on the course pretty quickly. Also, there's nobody out here. It's a beautiful day. Nobody out here. Oh, that was the weak one. Life happens. I'm gonna get over it. I gotta give up control. I'm trying to do too much on the downswing, but I'm not working on the downswing, so I don't want to. I don't want to work on two things at one time. Keep it deliberate, one thing at a time. I'm working on hands across the chest, arm across the chest. Alright, we'll do a couple more. You always got to end on a good one, right? And then I'll evaluate the last swing on V1. baby. Go! Get out of here. Woo! I really felt that one. That felt good. Alright, one more. Always one more. Oh yeah, that was compression. I... when it's compressed. That shoulder down, I don't think my shoulder was getting down enough. And now I'm really getting it there. I'm seeing the improvement over the course of the session here. Oh yeah, a little pull, but still I can feel it in the form of this center on the face contact. Alright, 
Last one for sure, no matter what happens. That was okay let's go to v1 analyze the last swing we're gonna go now and to analyze that in the studio before I, before we go back to the studio I want you know this is this is one of the most effective ways to practice and practicing is a large part of getting this new swing down so before you end up saying or saying to yourself well this isn't working this isn't the moves aren't implementing well one thing you gotta remember is give yourself time. Don't work on everything so much. Give yourself a small plate of food to work on. So give yourself time to implement the new change. Whatever you're implementing, make sure it's small. Like today, I just worked on one thing. Left arm crossing the chest. I know my downswing is a little steep, just a little bit. I'm not gonna work on it. It's not time for me to work on that. I've gotta get one before I work on the other. Because if I'm leveling out, then I'll be steep. So I've got to get out rid of the takeaway issue first. The shoulder's got to keep going down first before I do anything. And when I get back and evaluate, we'll see if I really did a good job of getting that shoulder down, having a good relationship with the ball, and also taking the arm across the chest, getting rid of the lifting in favor of a more around powerful swing. Now based on the results I saw today, almost everything was center. I hit one off the toe, but almost everything was dead center. So I'm led to believe that whatever that, whatever I worked on today was rather successful. Now we'll just go back and evaluate in the studio. Let's take a look at the final swing of the day, see how we did, see if there's a noticeable improvement in shoulder turn and takeaway and path. So let's see, okay, take your left arm across the chest, still coming up the shaft plane, maybe a little lower. Left arm is much deeper than it was earlier. My long backswing has shortened up quite a bit. I've got a better connection of my arm against my side. And the path on the way down is much closer to the blue line. So it's shallowing out. It's matching the blue line. That's a big improvement in a short period of time. That's because I was more deliberate with my swing moves. Now because of that, I'm able to hit a nice draw. And because of that, I'm hitting a nice draw. But not only that, my club face is square at impact. And it's still square or square to the path on the way through and it's still square here. So the club face isn't rotated at a 90 degree angle. It's actually square, it's squarer there. It's tracing the arc on the way through. You wanna keep the club face square to the arc on the way through. It's a good sign of somebody who hasn't, who's using the body to square the face. Now I'll probably finish a little bit lower around my body. All right, look at that. You can see shoulder line and the arms are just a little bit above it. I'll finish a little bit lower, but I made an improvement today. So that's a big improvement. After hitting only about 30 to 40 golf balls, being deliberate, I can already see a really nice improvement and the ball striking doesn't lie. This is what can happen to your swing if you devote time to practicing quality over quantity. So I did a lot of deliberate practice moves which led to quality swings, quality rehearsals, and then quality swings. And that led to a big improvement in a very short amount of time. All right, Segudo Golfers, thanks again for tuning in to this practice session vlog style video. And use these practice techniques. They'll guide your learning as you're going through learning this new system. Remember, you're making a change and it's going to feel different. You've got to be patient when making the change. If you take the steps that I took today, I guarantee you'll see your swing change much faster. You'll be having fun a lot quicker because we can't rush the learning process. Your body needs time to adjust to new motions. Thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing y'all in a future episode. Have an awesome week.